everybody and welcome to my studio today. My name is Lana Lamb and I'm a decorative artist and I love teaching people to paint. So if you are new to my YouTube channel, please hit the subscribe button so you can watch all my videos and hit the notification bell so you can be notified of every time I post a video. Please give me a thumbs up if you like this video because it really helps my YouTube channel. So what are we painting today? We're painting this adorable elephant. Isn't he so cute? I love him. This is a lot of layering on this elephant to get him to this point. And the grasses have a lot of layering too. A fun, fun project. First elephant I've ever painted. I had such a great time figuring everything out on this one and I'm going to teach you how to do it. So let's turn around to my paint table and let's get started. Okay, I've got multi-purpose sealer applied onto my surface. It's dried. I've lightly sanded it. So now I want to mix just a very pale yellow for the background. So we're going to use Hansa Yellow Medium. This is uh, DecoArt Traditions paints. It comes in tubes now. I still have some in the bottles. And then we're going to add white. I'm almost out of white in this bottle. So. So we need more white than yellow, obviously, because we're making a very pale yellow. This is just titanium white. Love this paint. I'm going to continue to keep that upside down because there might be still a little bit in the bottle. So I'm going to take my palette knife and actually mix this. And I think I want it to have a little bit more maybe of a golden color. So I'm going to add a little bit of burnt sienna. And I'm going to put some more white out here because I'm not sure this is enough paint to cover my board. So. bright yellow. I'm going to tone that down just a little bit. You could use some raw ember too. I'm almost out of raw ember so I switched over to burnt sienna. So that's just really muted down pale yellow. So we're going to take our dampened artist sponge. No sense in wasting what's on my palette knife here. And we're going to apply two coats to the surface and the sides. And I'm just painting on a board, but you can certainly do it on a canvas. 9 by 12 is the size I'm using here. Alright, I'm going to let this coat dry, and then I'll, when it's dry I'll do the edges and then apply a second coat on here. I want to make sure this doesn't dry out, so I'm going to lightly spritz it, and then I'm going to cover it with a, another paper plate, and just set a bottle of paint right on top of it, just to hold the two plates together. Alright, I'm going to let this get dry. Okay, um, it's dry and I've lightly sanded it, so I want to mark down about three and a half inches for my horizon line. Actually, I think I'm going to go up to three inches and mark it. And I'm just going to draw a very light line on here. 
just uh, light enough for me to see it. Okay, we're going to start adding some color in for our sky here. So, I want my sky to have a little bit of a glow to it over here that's going to be shining this direction. So I've got my pale yellow. I'm going to keep that on my palette. And I'm going to add a little bit more yellow. And this is Hansa Yellow Light. And I'm going to add some Vermilion. And a little bit more white. And I'm going to grab me a flat brush here. And I'm going to start with my base color here. Where's my water? I'm going to lightly it's my surface now if you're on a canvas you definitely want to dampen your canvas a little bit and I'm just going to put in a little bit of our base color on here while this is wet I have the bottle way up here spraying because I don't want to put down a ton of water on here and then go in with your ear your base coat that we mixed up. If you need to mix a little bit more, go ahead and it's okay if it's not exactly the same. Okay, I want to put some white like right along the horizon line here. And I'm just going to take that up and blend it into that yellow a little bit more. Blend it up a little bit. A little bit of a glare on here. I'm going to wipe the excess out of my brush so I can just come in and gently blend this. We're working wet into wet here. All right, I'm going to grab some of the brighter yellow and I want to put it over here in the sky. Keep it more on this right side. Wipe out my brush and then I'm just going to softly blend it to where it fades away coming over here. Now I'm going to get a tiny little bit of this vermilion, and I'm going to put this in, give a little bit of glow in here, wet into wet, so that's very important so that we can gently blend that color in with that, that yellow that's on there. So you have to work kind of quickly while this is, is still wet. You don't want to get water on your brush if you don't have to because then you're just going to lift the little bit of paint that you've got there. You'll just start lifting it. Now I'm going to come down into that white a little bit and gently blend it into that white. And work my brush so that the paint goes out of it over on this side. I'm going to go into a little bit of white and put a little bit more. I've still got some of that orange on my brush so it's streaking in there just a little bit. Just some flat line highlights in here. I'm not going to really worry too much about the sky. We just want a little bit of a, a glow on here. And scrub it into the surface. Now if your paint starts getting tacky, then it's time to get out of it. So we've got a little glow. I think I want to add a little bit of that brighter yellow over here. So I'm going to get my brush slightly damp and remove some of that other color out. Let me get a little bit of the bright yellow with a little bit of that lighter yellow. 
maybe not have it be quite so bright. And then we'll bring this over here. And a bit more of our base color. Barely come down into that white. We don't want to lose that white down there. And then we can kind of bring these two together. So we've got a really pretty sky back there. We can always come in and add some more brighter colors as the painting develops. Which I may do, but for now it's tacky and I've got to stay out of it. So down here on the horizon line there's a little bit of like distance stuff going on. Can't really tell if it's mountains or trees or whatever it is. So we're going to kind of create that back there and I want to grab some, not that color, let's see if this color will work. I want kind of a bluish gray color. This is cobalt blue hue and I'll put a little tiny bit of black out. So I want to use mostly white here with a tiny little bit of a blue tint and a tiny little bit of black is very overpowering so we have to be careful with it. A little bit more blue and then we'll bring some more white into that. So we're going to create some distant stuff going on back here. So I'm just going to kind of follow my horizon line and put some stuff going on back here. I'm not going to worry too much about how it looks. Just get it in there. I don't want it to be much of a, of a focal point. We just We just know it's there. If you're doing a wraparound canvas, be sure you do your edges as you do this stuff so that everything is as it should be. So we've got a little bit of distance going on back there. And I think we'll add a little bit of, well actually, let me put some red, red out. We might add some of this red into our sky later brighten it up just a little bit. This is, what color is this? This is naphthol red. So some naphthol red. And I want to create a little bit of an orangey brown color. But then I want it to be light. So I've taken the vermilion, the naphthol red, and the burnt sienna. And I'm mixing a little bit here, but I want it to be lighter. Maybe a little bit on the grayer side. Ooh, that might be too much black, so let me wipe my brush off. Add some of my colors back in here. That now it's too red. Grab some white. A little bit of black, a little bit of orange. So we've got this almost purpley, purpley gray color right here. Okay, now we want to come in and put a little little row of this in here. And I'm just going to kind of tap it in. Grab a little bit of water. Try to make it a little bit irregular, not so. I 
could go to a small round brush or a filbert here to give it some a little bit more character. a little bit more closer trees or you know something but this is our addition to our horizon line so we just mix those those colors together okay I thought I would create a few little clouds in here that I can highlight so I've got a, a quarter inch angle brush I'm dipping the short end or the heel into the vermilion and the toe or the longer end into the napsol red. And just where I have my orangey colors, a little bit too much paint. I'm going to wipe off some of my paint and grab some water. I'm going to put some of this in here and create, you know, a few cloudy areas kind of coming in here. I'm just kind of wiggling the brush and scrubbing it on. I've got water in my brush so I can move the paint and create some kind of fun stuff going on here. Of course, as you get to the horizon, things are going to be more flat, so you know you won't really see that. I might grab a little bit of yellow. I come over here and I want to put a little bit of yellow on those so I'm going to remove some of the paint and grab some water and then actually I think I'll mix a little bit of white with my yellow here that's the Hansa yellow medium and I'm going to just add some Scrub, I'm just kind of scrubbing lightly, very lightly scrubbing, and some highlights. Hands of yellow and white. Tap my paper towel to remove a little bit of the paint off of my brush. Just kind of up the, the tips of the clouds. And then just pick up a little bit more white. Kind of scrub that on there. Uh, lightly scrubbing whichever direction you want the brush to go just kind of move it around and I think this will be good for our clouds Ooh. I don't want that. Picked up a little bit of something. I'm not really sure what that was. Wasn't even close to dark colors. These just kind of scrub lightly in here. They'll fade away because there's not a whole lot of paint on my brush, so 
That gives us a fun little sky back there. And I'm liking that a lot. So I think that's going to finish our sky. Unless later I feel like it needs more. But for now, I think that's going to finish that. So I want to start adding a few little grassy areas in here. Um, some texture in here before we put our main feature on here. Okay, uh, I'm mixing a little bit more of our base color, but I'm adding a little bit of raw sienna to it because I want it to be a little bit more on the golden end of the color. Slightly different from our base color, but not a ton different. Okay, and I'm also going to put a little bit of black out here. So we're just going to start um, filling in our ground color here. And I'm just going to grab a, an angle brush. I'm using an older brush when I'm laying in my base coats. So you use whatever brush that uh, you would like. This is a three-quarter inch angle. So I'm going to start by picking up some of this color and just kind of working it into the surface. I think I'm going to spritz a little bit of water on here so I have time to move the paint and blend it out just a little bit. We, again, we're working wet into wet. This is the undercoat here of our grasses and so um, we're just it's still going to be in what we call the ugly stage so don't don't stress out about it. I'm going to get a little bit of the burnt now this is raw sienna and I want to work a little bit of this up in here and this is really going to fade down in there because of I'll put a little bit of the other the raw sienna over here Sienna. No, this is raw sienna. <laughs> I'm going to get them backwards every single time. Tiny, tiny little bit of black in here. I'm going to put a little bit of this along back here. And again, we're working wet into wet. We want a bunch of dark color up in here, so I'm going to get a little bit more mixed together. So we're using our base mix, which I added a little bit of raw sienna to, some, a little bit more raw sienna and a little bit of black. And we're just going to work that color down in this corner a little bit. Again, this is, this is underlaying of our colors, so A little bit more of the raw sienna. Work that in. Keep some of it a little light. I might add just a touch of yellow into that raw sienna. Bring some of that yellow down in here. And again, this is just undercoating, so I don't want you stressing about, about how terrible it looks because we're just creating some color values for our grasses that we're going to put in in a little bit. So that's our undercoloring of our grasses. brush out. Okay, now I want to do just a little bit of stippling in the grass areas before I put my, my line drawing on here. So I'm going to take this uh, color that we have mixed here. I'm going to add just a little bit of white to it. And I'm just using a stippling brush. You can use any kind of old brush that you like. Add a little bit more white. I'm going to remove some of the paint off of here because I don't want a whole lot to come off. And we're going to stipple some 
lighter areas in here. And just some of this will be covered up when we put our line drawing on here. Some of it won't. I'm going to grab just a little bit of yellow, a little bit of raw sienna. A little bit more raw sienna, maybe a little burnt sienna in there as well. A little more burnt sienna. Ooh, that's a lot. Maybe not quite that much. We have a tiny bit of yellow in there, a little bit more of the raw sienna. We'll tap some of this in here if we can see it. Just random places. Just a little bit of stippling. I'm going to get a little bit of water. Add to that. So it will come off of my brush a little bit more. Just kind of beginning a little bit of a layer of grasses. But this is still background filler stuff, so under coating. So just play around with the paints that you have because it's going to be all based on the color values that you put and blend it in with the background. So you'll have to adjust your paint mix accordingly. Like I said, some of this is going to be covered up. I'm going to grab a tiny little bit of black. And put some of this over here. I do want a little bit of this over here. I don't have a whole lot of paint on my brush, so this area in here we're not really going to see a whole lot. So after we put everything in, so we just want a light stippling. burnt sienna in at this time. I'm going to tap some of that off on my paper towel. I want a little bit of this color for underneath my grasses over here and in through here. This is going to be like the underneath grassy areas. A little bit of yellow. Let's add a little bit of yellow to that. This area right here, we're not really going to see a whole lot, so I'm not going to worry about putting much in there. So I think we'll kind of leave it at that. It's really just a really light, rough texturing on there. Not a ton of paint. So we need to get this dry so we can add in our um, line drawing. Okay, I've got my line drawing here, laid on here. I've traced it onto tracing paper. And now I'm going to put some gray graphite paper underneath it. And we're going to trace this out. Now you can just trace it with a pencil or a pen or you could actually take a um, 
graphite pencil of some kind or a charcoal pencil of some kind and draw the lines on the back of the paper and then rub it onto the surface. I'm using a stylus and I'm going to place the lines on here and they're coming out pretty dark so that's okay because we're painting him in gray. Now I'm not going to worry too much about where his feet are because the grasses are covering up his feet and so I'm just going to give an indication I need to draw another line right there. Be a little fatter than that, but we'll put a little color down in here for you know where those are. But as far as detail for feet, we're not going to be adding that because it's covered up with grasses. But we want everything else the same with the trunk here. We won't be seeing the end of it. Okay, so we just basically need the shape. He's got a tail here. And I think, I'm not really sure what, what this part is, but it's in the photo I have. I had tracing paper there. Okay, so we've got a pretty pretty decent outline here, and I did tape mine down so it wouldn't move. A couple of pieces of tape is all you need to tape it down so it won't move. And I'll set that aside. Now we're going to get ready to paint in our elephant, and we want to just paint him in with um, a gray. So I've got black and white here on my palette, so we're just going to make a light gray color. So I'm going to take a little bit of that black and work it over here. And we will just start filling him in. Again, this is just undercoat. He's going to have many colors on him. But I do want to paint in each section kind of by itself. I've got a little bit of water in my brush so that my paint is thinned down. Usually straight out of the bottle is a little bit too thick for base coating so you occasionally need to add a little bit of water into the paint to get it a nice consistency to lay on a nice smooth coat. No globby lumps, nice and smooth layers here. And I'm not really worried about my color values here because of keeping them all the same. Because nothing in nature is exactly the same and brush mixing is the easiest way to do your paint so that you're not mixing up large quantities and then having lots of extra paint that you don't need. Brush mixing is definitely the best way to help you learn your color values and getting them close to the same. Okay, so I've painted in, you know, his backside and his ear and you can still I can still retain those shapes. So that's what we're going to do for the whole elephant. Bring this back leg back here. And I'm just going to kind of bring it down into the the grass area a little bit. I mean, you know, I know it doesn't look anything like an elephant's foot, but we're not going to see it. Alright. A little bit more here. 
here. And we'll probably, I'll let this dry and see how it looks, but we'll probably just put one coat of this on here because um, we're going to be adding quite a few layers on here. Again, I'm just going to give the indication of where a foot is there. drop of water in this down a little bit so it can move easily. Turn this here. I'm still just using one of my older brushes to base coat with. This is a um, 16 flat. This is actually a one stroke brush, which a lot of people consider them craft brushes, but I have to tell you, they are the most resilient brushes. They hold paint and water well. They clean up nicely. I've had mine for so many years. I can't even begin to tell you how long I've had them. At least 16 years and uh, they are just really good brushes. I use them mostly for base coating, but they're great for other things. And if you're a one stroke person, if you do that technique, um, they're the kind of brushes that work best for that technique. might do a second coat on here because I've got a little bit of a thin layer over here but I'll go off camera and do that because you know it'll it'll just be the exact same way that I'm doing it here and you know I'll probably have my paint a, a little thinner because I don't need a heavy coat I'm not filling in the, the big space I'm just kind of filling in the gaps that the paint left so um, let me just so I'm adding a little bit of water right here. So now it's just almost like a um, glaze of paint. And I just kind of want to fill in. I'll just show you on camera because it's really pretty easy and it goes quick. I just want to fill in. And all this does is fill in the gaps where when you were painting the first time, your paint uh, kind of drug on there and left some openings. This just kind of fills all that in. And when you're done doing this, if you cannot see your um, your separation line drawings anymore, then you want to go in and put those back in with some white graphite. So you can see them good. So that's kind of filling it in a little bit more. I have to mix just a tiny bit more. It's going to give it a smoother undercoat, so it's really going to help with that. The key thing is to wait until your top coat is completely dry. That wasn't quite dry right there, so I lifted a little bit of the paint. smooths it out a little bit. Let's paint in our tusks. And we're going to paint them in with gray as well. I just want to keep them separate. A little bit lighter gray, I think. Not quite as dark as what we put on the body. So if you've still got some of your mix there, just add some white to it. 
paint in your tusks this color. And it's a really light gray. And I forgot to paint in his tail, so let me add that in real quick. A little bit of his tail is peeking back here. Okay, I think that's got it on there pretty good. So I'm going to let this dry, and I'm going to go ahead and add, I can kind of see where everything is, but I'm going to add in my um, line drawings with some white graphite as soon as it's dry, so you'll be able to see where I'm going with everything. Okay, so I put my lines of each particular piece on this elephant with uh, white graphite um, so that you can see them and then I came back with some gray my uh, charcoal pencil and added some lines on here so you can kind of see where we're going to be going that's just for your uh, benefit you don't necessarily have to put those on there but I want to give you a guideline I'm going to take my black and move it over here I need to thin it down a little bit with some water So I'm going to dip a, a detail liner, and I have a 10-0 liner. It's got long, thin bristles. I'm thinning down my paint with water to make it inky consistency so it flows off of my brush nicely. We'll stay up on the tip, and that's how we get our nice, fine detail lines. Okay? I am going to wipe off the ferrule because we don't want any water to roll down onto our project so I'm just going to roll the ferrule right here on the paper towel and remove that excess. Okay now this step is going to really I mean when we do it you're going to be like oh my gosh but we're going to add layers of color on here but we need this on here first so we can begin to push it back as we add our layers on here. So the elephant has all these lines and cracks in its skin and all this stuff. So we're going to try and duplicate that with this detail brush. So back here on the back, I'm just going to start adding some, some kind of lines. They don't have to be anything specific. Um, some of these will be longer than others, and but we do want to stay up on the tip and keep these as thin as possible. And we're going to come down towards his abdomen here. A lot of this is going to really fade back into the background once he's completely painted, but we need this in here. And we want these little lines everywhere. These are just cracks in his, you know, skin basically. And to me, you cannot have too many, but you might think otherwise. Mix more paint as you need it. Okay, I know he's kind of looking like a zebra right now, but you got to trust the process. It's going to be awesome at the end. So I want to put some on his legs. Kind of want to follow. He's got kind of a knee thing. Actually, it would be on the other side probably. But I'm trying to look at the pictures and see how it works, but I guess in the back it would be here a little bit more. 
and we'll just come all the way down although we won't see that down in there you know and they don't always just go straight so don't don't make them just straight they go really all different directions come over here and add some others in here and I'm just going to go ahead and go a little bit down on the foot again we won't see that so I'm not going to worry too much about it and then uh, on his front leg he'll have some that'll, that'll be coming a, kind of around this way and then lines that go this way he will have a few longer ones on his leg and then you can come in and fill in some smaller ones This is all over, and I know it's kind of tedious, so importance the important thing is to keep your ink, your paint inky consistency. That is really super important. So if you need to, you know, stop and add a little bit more. I'm going to come in here and add some, some lines kind of coming down like this, going across some of this stuff. they really have so many lines okay so the ears we're gonna come out from around to this point and bring some lines almost like tree trunk lines almost and you put these all in the ears or the ear we only have one ear We may have to come back once we start pushing some of this down into the background. We may have to come back and add a few of these on top so that we can see a little bit more. Actually, I'm going to remove that one right there. Because we want to follow the shape of the ear here. This part right here is like the back part right before it gets to his head. And so these are going to go this way. I know, he's really in that ugly stage now, isn't he? Ridiculous, but it's the way it's got to be. Okay, so this leg, we're going to come across a little bit like this. Just put in your 
basic lines first and then you can come back in and fill in. Remember he has cracks going every which direction. Okay, so his head, we're going to start up here. And these actually come all the way kind of down. His eye is going to have a bunch of lines around it. lines are going to come and work their way in over here. And we'll bring some of these up a little bit farther. And then these up in here, they'll just start getting a little bit farther away and they'll start having more jaggedness coming, you know, across each other. If you can find a reference photo of an elephant, that's always helpful. Okay, so let's see. I can't really see too much of this. It's going to be in the shadow, but we're going to put some lines coming down here. A few that can go through here. And then on his um, trunk, we're going to have, thin down a little bit more paint here. We're going to have these that go across, and they don't have to be a solid line, so don't worry too much about that. And there are quite, when you get lower, there just seems to be more and more and more and more. Just seems like there's a lot of them the smaller it gets down here and then we're going to come back and add some lines going this way not straight again we just want to be irregular with these here. Again, this is going to give the look of that wrinkly skin. Up here on the back is where it has, seems like it has the most cracks or lines in the skin. I don't know if because that's the part that gets the beating of the sun the most. Over here we'll just have some light ones. We can't really see those because they're in the light. And we'll put a few here. Okay. So I'm going to stop there and leave it 
right there because I think we've got a, a good quantity of lines to start with here to start layering our paint on with. But I know you're going to be doing this. Remember to keep your paint inking consistency and to stay up on the very tip of your brush. And that will keep your lines from being very thick. And, you know, you'll get some delicate lines in there. Now, I know it, it looks, like, ridiculous. But you got to trust me. I've never led you astray yet. Okay, I've kind of decided I don't want the whole sky to be yellow. I want to bring in a little bit of blue. So I'm going to take a little bit of the cobalt blue hue. I believe that's what it is. Yep. We use this back here in this area. And I want to put a little bit of this up here in the sky. So I'm going to lay some in and grab some water. A little bit of water. And begin to blend it out just a little bit and lighten up this side of the sky a little bit. I'm doing it now because if I get into my elephant, no big deal. And just kind of let it softly fade away over there. But we just want to mix it with some white so it doesn't turn our sky green. We want to retain a, a pale blue sky over here. So I think that's going to um, make me happy about the sky. I like that a little bit better because we're going to have the glow of the sky here coming onto our elephant. So I'll just take my damp brush and wash this off of the elephant right here. I'm going to be adding some blues on the elephant so that really didn't matter. But um, I think that's going to make me a little bit happier with the sky there. Okay, let's start adding some color on our elephant. So I've got my blue, which is the cobalt blue hue. We're going to start with that one. We're going to add some other blues on here, but I'm going to start with this one. And I'm just going to side load for a float. And I'm using a 12. Um, this is like a bright. The bristles are short. They're not uh, as long as what these bristles are. So I, I like these kind better for floating and things, but I want you to use whatever brush you like to use. I like to show you what I use, but again, my brushes are a recommendation if you are unsure where to go because um, but you don't have to use the exact same brushes that I use. Okay, so now we're going to start defining our shapes a little bit here. So we're going to start by going underneath back here where the body separates from the legs. I'm trying to remember which side of my brush I'm loaded on. So you have your brush with a little bit of water in it. You just put a little bit of paint on the very edge of the brush and work it into that corner to make a very soft color. We don't need anything bright. We're just kind of, again, creating some undercoatings, giving ourselves some guidelines of where we're going so we don't have to be you know, extreme about any of this. Okay. Let's separate our... Oh, I got into some white. Let me flip over my towel here because it came off of my paper towel. And we'll try this again. Side loading on that one little corner. Water in your brush is key. You can't go anywhere without water. So we're going to work around the ear here and get the shape of the ear kind of defined. Again, we're just defining shapes here. We 
we're not adding tons of detail with these layers yet. This tusk a little bit. If you need more water in your brush, be sure and get some. Don't let your brush get dry because then you won't be able to uh, paint very well with it. We're going to put a little bit of this around the eye. tap and smear it around there. I'm going to go down this back edge. Again, we're just laying in areas where we want to have some detail in here. Some darker colors later. I'm going to put just a little bit around the ear here. Alright, so now I want to start bringing this color out more. Um, in some of these areas. I'm going to add two other blues, some phthalo blue. I've got black on my palette, which I'm going to need. I'll need white later, but for now we're just going to put two other blues out. Phthalo blue and cerulean blue. Oh, goodness gracious, these bottles are hard to open. Like I said, they do have this paint in tubes now. The bottles is the way they used to carry it. And I still have plenty in the bottles. Love this paint. It's just an awesome paint. So I'm going to take this um, cobalt blue hue, get a little bit more on my brush. And we're going to begin bringing this out a little bit more and creating some of our darker areas on here. Spritz some water on your palette if you need to, so you can pick up paint easily. So this area is really going to be in shadow down here. So we want to start adding some, some color down in here. And kind of work it up to here. Let it kind of fade away up there. I know this is a bright color and you're thinking, oh my gosh, how are we ever going to make this elephant the right color? It'll get there. It will absolutely get there. Okay, let's put some of this down here. that up a little bit. We want more here. And I'm going to bring this down. The front of the leg, it's um, actually I'm going to bring it down both sides. More on the back than the front. The front it has a little bit of reflective light on it, but the leg is kind of 
And some darker areas, some shadowy areas from the rest of the body. This is going to be really dark back here. So again, we're, we're still just using that cobalt hue. We're just bringing it out farther than what we originally put it. Right to here. That's going to have highlight on it in the front of the leg. Let's add some more to the trunk here. Because all of this is in shadow. Stay off of your tusk. So this is mostly kind of shadowed down here. And it's highlighted on the front up there. Let's add a little bit of this in here. Start creating a little bit of a darker area in here. So I'm just kind of tapping it in there. Create some darker areas. It's really dark around the eye there. And then we'll have a little bit up here. The ear is actually really dark right here next to the head. This, this part right here is in shadow. It's a little shadowy back here as well. going to put some kind of coming out on the edge of the ear. Just kind of work it out. Kind of a hit and miss along the edge of the ear here. We'll have a little bit of valleys in the ear here. We want it to be here. And we'll, we'll just tint some of this onto the trunk in a few places. And back here. Okay, I think we're getting a, a good first first layer of our shadow colors. We are creating our shadowy areas right now. So um, we're gonna start adding some darker colors now. Okay, I'm trying to determine my next color that I wanna use because this is just gonna be a wash in some of the areas of the elephant. So I'm gonna take my um, phthalo blue and a tiny little bit of black and a lot of water a little bit more blue. And it's creating almost a turquoisey color here. But I want it a very thin wash. It's mostly water. We're just tinting paint at this point. And we're going to begin laying some of this in. And some areas. Just kind of tap it in. Just let it be wherever it wherever it lands that's going to be just fine. Just I don't want you to stress out about this. This is just you know, lay some in. Oh, that looks good there. Let's see. I think I want some up here. There's really no right or wrong here. We'll probably do this a couple of times. We'll let it dry. Cuz there's a lot of um reflection of colors. We don't have to make our elephant so dull and boring.
Okay, I'm going to let that dry and then I'm going to come back and do it again. Okay, so I've come back in and tapped a little bit more of this watery mix. You have to make sure it's dry before you do this. And um, so just tap that in there and get a little bit more on there. Now if, if you have added too much water to your mix, you may have to come back and repeat it a third time. So um, that's okay. But you want to have a little bit of this kind of tealy color in there. And I think I might do mine another time because I want a little bit more of that color in there. Okay, I want to start adding a little bit of dirty orange colors in here. So I've got my um, raw sienna, my uh, vermilion, and a tiny little bit of black. dirty orange color. Again, we're making a wash of this color. I'm going to offload on my paper towel and pick up just a little bit. Touch my paper towel and we're going to put some of this in here. This side. Has a, li a lot of light over here on this side. I'm put it along this edge. Okay, this is still just a wash. We're just adding a little bit of this color. We can put a little bit in here, but it probably won't show up in the end. But I'll go ahead and just kind of tap some in there. I want some through here. You don't want to put too much of that black in there because, you know, it can turn that color a little on the green side. We want to keep it more on the orangey, dirty orange side. Of course, we've got blues on here, so it might slightly mix with a little bit of that blue you've got on there already. Okay, do not stress out about it. We've got more layers to go here. And I think I'm going to put a little bit more in here just to darken it up. Make sure it's dry or you're just going to lift it. So any place you've already tapped some, just go ahead and tap a little more in there. And I literally am just tapping as you can see. Okay? It's just the building of color here. Okay, I think that's looking pretty good for that color. So again, that was our raw sienna vermilion and a teeny tiny little bit of black. It's mostly raw sienna, okay? Okay, let's, let's get this dry. Okay, looks like I stuck my finger in something here. 
I don't know if that was already there or what I did with my finger. Okay, so we're going to start adding some um, darker colors in here now. We're going to start working with some black. Now, I don't want to go to straight dark black right away. So we're going to create a dark gray value. So we're going to take our black and some white. Make a dark gray. I'm going to add a little bit of blue, either the phthalo blue or the um, cobalt blue hue. Either one will work. I'll put a little bit of that out here. Oops. It doesn't really matter which one you decide to use. Just get a little blue tint in there in that dark gray. I'm going to wash my brush out because I've got paint too far over on the bristles because we're just side loading for a float. Okay, and again, I'm just going to be brush mixing. So we'll start back here on the leg back here. And we'll begin adding some of this grayish blue color on here. We'll definitely put some of this down in the grass. We want it to be dark color down here in the grass to represent the foot being down in the grass. This is a little bit more opaque of a color than we've been adding. So it's going to start pushing everything really far back in there. Too much blue. And I'm okay if my color is not exactly the same color every single time. I really enjoy brush mixing. That might be just a touch too blue. So I'm going to get a little bit more black in there. A little bit more white. I'm going to move around so I don't go directly where I've just painted. And we're going to go underneath. Stay out of my grassy area if I can. a little bit more black, white, teeny tiny bit of blue. Make sure we put some of this color down in the grass. miss this area every time we've shaded so go back and try and grab that. That will be a little dark spot when we're done. I need to put a little bit of highlight on that area right there. Alright, let's come up here to the ends underneath the ear here. And then all of this area under here Mix a little bit more here. Oh, too much blue. Wipe that out. This is all going to be dark here. It's behind. Add just a tiny bit more black in there. It's behind this leg. This is all dark.
darker through there. Okay, so the ear, it's really dark on the ear itself, right through here. So we'll start with our dark color right here. Bring it inside the ear. Okay, we'll come back and do these other areas. This is dark down here. side of the trunk. And I'll start smoothing that edge out. And we'll put a little bit, you know, down there, making it look like the, the trunk is completed. That that will be covered up with grasses, but we want to make sure it's kind of completed. a little bit more here. Tiny little black. Around the eye is really dark. I'm going to get a little bit more black in there. It's really dark, so I'm going to tap this in around the eye. I'm not worrying about getting it in the eye because we got to come in and paint the eye black. I'm going to tap that and kind of take my finger and mush it around there. We've got a area right through here. That's kind of a low area, so we'll just kind of tap some in there. black in the mix. I think I have too much water in my brush now. Right, now we'll go on this side of the ear and darken it up. And up here. put a little bit of this back in here because it's this is a shadowy area it's not quite as dark as some of our other shadows but it's still darker back in here okay. mix a little bit more here a little more black darker area in here, so tap that in, kind of blend it out with my finger. I want to bring some more above the eye a little bit. It's going to end up being much darker around the eye. I'm just going to tap some in through here, kind of smooth it out with my finger. It's all kind of a tapping and blending. Black in here. Okay. 
Okay, so we got to put some more of this color on the ear. So we're going to kind of try and create some like highs and lows on the ear. So I'm going to tap some in here, coming all, almost all the way to the edge. Get a little bit of water on my brush so I can smooth out edges here. Alright, we're just tapping in some, some, some of this darker mix here. We're not um, trying to be very precise on where we put it. We're just get a little bit more mixed up here. Can't see my blue. in that mix, I think. I have to keep washing out my brush because the paint's going over too far into my bristles. And I just want to be able to tap some in there and smooth out with my finger. That's basically what we're doing here. and smoothing, tapping and smoothing. Now we don't want our elephant to be blue, so we're covering up some of this blue in here. We do want some blue in there, we just don't need it to be filling, you know, but that's the main color that we see. We don't want to see that as our main color. Just remove that right there because it's becoming a little mess. And let me try it again. Tap some in there. I really want a little bit more opaque right there. So let me mix. Too light, too blue. Go. It's still a little blue, but a little bit more black in there. All right, just kind of tap it. Tap it and blend, tap it and blend. <laughs> It's a tapping and blending. So I've got paint and water in my brush. I'm tapping it in there and using my finger to, to kind of blend it out. Tap 
and blend, tap and blend. I'm pretty much running out of paint out of my brush now, so. Need a little bit of this color. One more place, and we're gonna let this layer dry. We need it to be pretty, pretty dry before we go on. But this place right back here on on the back is dark. I know you think it would be highlighted, but. Get his tail. Let's put a little bit of shading there. So we've got a couple more layers to go on here, but I think our elephant is looking pretty good looking pretty good okay we're looking pretty good here I think I want to um, create a little bit of a wash of black here well, actually before I do that I want to define these lines on the trunk a little bit more because I want them to look a little deeper so I've got a side load of black here Actually, they'll be longer up here. I'm going to touch my finger to kind of take them back. This is just a small amount of paint here. Don't, don't get carried away. Super duper tiny, tiny amount of black. As we get down here, there are just so many more lines. So I'm going to paint it on and then touch back with my finger, soften them back. see as many. It's kind of defining his... Uh, this one I might take down just a little bit. It doesn't need to be quite that dark. Okay, so now I'm going to side load a washy color of this black. We're going to create a few little darker areas on here. So right underneath here, it's going to be dark, and down here to separate these two legs. We're going to come back and wash in some black over the majority of our elephant, but right now we're just creating the really deep shadow areas. So underneath the ear right here, it's going to be a lot more shadowy. I'm kind of up on the edge because I've got a fairly large brush here and I don't want it to um, you know, take over too much. Oops, we're just now creating extreme depth in this. Let's see. Okay, I'm 
going to be just kind of up on the edge of the brush here. I've got it tilted up a little bit. I'm going to lay it more flat here. I want it to be a little bit darker right through here. Still touch back with my finger. Kind of soften that out. <clears throat> Let's go underneath this leg. And on this one I'm going to bring it down a little bit more and maybe along this back leg, the back of the leg, because it's definitely more in the shadow. Just tap that down. This little area right here, we're just going to keep it pretty dark. Remember, you're just creating a wash, a side load of uh, a washy color here, so don't, don't get tons of paint. So we're going to go right underneath there, and we're going to go along the back of this leg here. Put a little bit, kind of coming at an angle down the uh, leg itself, create like a separation there. It's almost like a, a wrinkle muscle type thing in the leg. Again, I'm going to put a little bit of this darker color down here by the feet. A little bit more water in my brush. Remove the excess water on a paper towel. Got a little bit too much paint, so I'm going to wipe that off. Okay. This whole area right through here is really a dark area. So I'm going to turn this so that I'm painting towards myself. And I'm going to start down here black. And just kind of tap and walk it up. Okay, I'm going to grab my mop brush, which I haven't used in this whole project, and just kind of mop, tap. I'm using it dry. I'm just going to tap into that area I just put in there and very gently help blend it together a little bit and smooth it out. Okay, so we've got a section underneath here that's going to be pretty dark. So I'm going to start, actually I'm going to start here. And then this is where it's going to be dark right through here. So we're going to darken this, kind of goes at an angle, tap some of that um, paint in there and then very lightly mop it and help blend that together and soften it down in there. You have to be careful with your mop brush. You have to be delicate with it so you don't remove the paint. You're just wanting to blend all of that together very nicely. A little bit back there. Um, we're going to put some of this right here. I'm actually going to go into that little bit of highlight and darken it just a little bit with this black. And then put some back here. And I want some of this coming down through here. Again, I'm just kind of tapping it in there. I'm going to take my finger, you can do the same thing with the mop brush, and kind of just soften it and push it down into the paint a little bit. We'll definitely have to come back and create a few more extremely dark areas here. 
but we just want to get these darkest ones in first. <clears throat> and then we can come back in. Intensify. You have to build up your layers slowly. If you do it too quickly, then um, the depth does not look right. I'm going to go ahead and paint the eye in with black. And we've got a few more places that we want to put our first little black shading on here. So we want some of this up here. And we'll put a little bit through here. Tap it in. Soften it out with your finger. Or your mop brush, whatever works. We're going to go around the eye, tap some of this in. I'll just go right over the eye since it's black. Tap that in around the eye. It's pretty dark there around the eye. We're going to need some here. through here is darker. Tap, tap, tap. Squish, squish, squish. Definitely going to have to rebase in that trunk. I've really, or that tusk. I've really gotten a lot of other colors on it. And that was a light gray color we put on there. All right, let's go down the back side of the trunk, kind of work it over a little bit. We'll put a little bit down here, even though we won't see the end of this trunk. And then we'll flip it over and do some on this edge as well. Bring it up a little bit. Okay, we need some of this dark color in the ear here. And we are just using carbon black. We've got some water in our brush to keep it a soft color so it's not hard and taking over and being something we don't want it to be. some in on the ear. A little bit more paint in the and the water mix there. Make it a little bit darker over here. And I'm just tap, tap, tapping. And then tap, tap, tapping and smoothing with my finger. Kind of, as I smooth with my finger, I'm kind of pushing it in there a little bit. All right. Need a little bit more right in here. I'm gonna put some back in here. I don't I don't want the elephant to remain too blue. We do want to see some blue in there. I think it's looking pretty good. I think before we add um, our last layer of a black shading on here <clears throat> before we add highlights, um, I'm gonna wash over the elephant with a little bit of black. So let's create a little bit of wash. So we're gonna take our black and add a 
a lot of water. We just want a very sheer color of black. It's mostly water. When you're creating a wash like this, all you're doing is taking water and barely tinting it with the paint. So we're going to wash over the entire elephant with this color, this wash of black. So be sure and keep it pretty sheer. Just do the whole elephant. He's looking pretty good. Let me make just a little bit more wash. I think our elephant is looking pretty good. This is the first elephant I've ever painted. 2020, I am making the year of getting out of my comfort zone and painting things that I wouldn't normally paint or that I think have intimidated me in the past. I think that I just couldn't do that. And I'm here to tell you that this is the second thing I've painted in 2020 that has taken me out of my comfort zone. And I'm very, very happy with how it's turning out. Okay, we got to let this dry. I'm gonna go ahead and touch up on his tusk just a little bit. I still may have to come back and paint it again, but I'm gonna make that uh, light gray color. Touch up here. We'll be doing some highlighting on it. Okay. Okay, my black wash is done. So before we add our final shading on here, we're gonna start adding some highlights. And um, we're gonna start, I'm just, uh, let's see what brush do I wanna use. I think I might use this uh, chisel brush. We're going to mix a blue color. So I'm gonna take some white and I want a little bit of this blue. This is the cerulean blue. And then, let's see, I might add just a tiny little bit of black to darken that up. It's almost a pale gray-blue color. I'm going to grab a separate plate here. I'm using plates as my palette this time. I just kind of started this and thought, well, I'll just finish it with what I started with instead of using my other palette. So that's why I'm going with foam plates. So I want a little bit of water in my brush. You know, load some up in there just on this edge and then touch my paper towel to release some of it. We want to start creating some brighter little highlights in here. So above the eye, we've got some up here. So I'm going to put some of this and touch it back with my finger, maybe use the water edge of my brush and soften it out. Let me zoom in just a little bit. And we'll put some over here. This is just a very pale blue-gray mix. And we're just creating some highlights in here. Soft highlights. We don't want um, really stark highlights on here. 
I'll bring this over just a little bit. This is more highlight in the shadowy area, but we're still going to have some highlights here because this is going to be a more golden highlight out here. But we do need some of this in here. So it's important to have the water on the water side of the brush because if you don't, it's going to be hard to soften some of this stuff out. And we don't want um, hard stuff in here, so it's important to be able to soften that out with some water. Okay, let's put some of this up here. Tap it in, and then take your finger and kind of blend it out a little bit. Get a little bit more of this on my brush. I remember where I mixed it here. <coughs> Which one is the wet one? There it is. Get some water. Okay, tap, 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 tap. Maybe. Water edge, kind of soften it and blend it out. Let me mix just a little bit more of that. Okay, we used <clears throat> white and this blue, cerulean blue, and a tiny little bit of black. Make that dirty blue gray color, a little bit of water. Touch your paper towel, and there you go. Oops, that's a lot of white there. Let's didn't get blended in well. Take some of that off. And got outside the lines here. We don't want to have any of this in the sky, so try to make sure you keep it keep it clean back there. Okay. I'm gonna put a little bit more of the blue. And the black. Okay, this back here is really pretty, pretty light back here. And then some down through here. I'm just going to tap in, use the water edge of the brush to kind of make it look mottled and then use my finger and kind of push it down into the surface okay let's see where else we need to go here we got a little bit on the edge of the ear Just a little bit through here. I'm going to come in and darken that a little bit right there when I put my last shading on. Okay, so let's see where else do we want to go with this. I want to just create a little bit of texture through here just by tapping a little bit of this in. I'm almost going in between the lines that I drew that I can still see in there. And if you've covered up all of your lines, you can come back in and kind of tap some or lightly put some more of your lines back in. I wouldn't do them very dark at all, very watery and sheer. Okay, a little bit more 
through here. Just tap, 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 whatever's left on the brush. And I'm going to put a little bit of this in the ear in just a few places. Create a little bit of some highlights in there. Okay, that's our first little highlight of that color. Um, now we need to create a little bit more of a golden highlight on here. So we're going to grab some yellow. And I've got some orange on my palette here still and some raw sienna. And I might put a little bit of red out here, this naphthol red. This is, yeah, naphthol red. I don't know if I'll need any of that. But um, we want to create a very light color here. That's pretty orange, so let's tone it down with a little bit of raw sienna. So I use the small, I have mostly yellow, and then the next color I have the most of is the raw sienna, a little bit of orange, and just the tiniest little bit of that red. I'm going to get a tiny little drop of white, a little bit of water on the opposite edge of my brush. I have paint here, I have water here. Okay. <clears throat> We're going to add a little bit of this. There's like this hump in his forehead right here. And we're going to put that right there. We'll put a little bit of it along the edge, front edge of the trunk, right through here. A little bit on his leg right here. And I think that's pretty much where we have those colors. Okay, now I want to add a tiny bit more of the red to it. And that might be too much, so let me grab some more yellow. We want it to be just a touch more orangey for some glow coming from the sky. And I'm going to get a tiny bit of white and mix in with that. Tiny, tiny bit of white. Okay. And then this is going to be over here. Maybe just a tiny bit more red in there. I want it to be a little bit brighter out here. This is really where the sun is hitting, right here. I have to come back and intensify the highlight right next to it. This color is going to come up on his head a little bit. Get some water on my brush. It's going to come down here. And then a little bit of it is coming down the trunk, just on that one edge. It's on this back leg back here from the sky. Remember, this is all reflection from that bright sky right there. And it's really only hitting the elephant in these places. I go down the trunk just a little bit because we want to have a little bit of a highlight coming down the trunk. And when we add our brightest highlight, we'll definitely brighten that up. Alright. I'm going to wipe my brush out. It's still got that paint in there, but I need to go into some white. I'm going to really lighten this up. 
work that into my brush so I don't have a ton of a paint ton of paint in there. Touch your paper towel if you feel like it's just going to be too much. And then this area right here where this hump is, we really want to create that definition. And it's going to come down through here. it over just a little bit. Let me grab a little bit of water. And then this is going to be down on the trunk more. I have to wash a little bit of orange I think over that, that area right there. It needs to be more reddish orange and then I'm just going to take this and tap it in between my lines and create a little bit of a textured highlight down the trunk and I'll kind of take my finger and buff it just a little bit and we need some of this on the front of the legs here I'm still going to have to come in and glaze a little bit more red-orange on here. Right there. And just a little bit on this leg. Okay, we need our red-orange glow from the sky here. So let's take some orange and some red. Kind of mix that together. We're going to create a wash of this color. Maybe just a tiny bit more orange in there. We're making this a sheer color. Remember, you're just tinting water. Tap off on my paper towel. And we're going to put some of this along here. A little bit on the trunk, but we mostly want it to be back here. Where the glow from the sky is coming in. I'm just going to wipe my brush off and grab a tiny little bit of white. Work it into my brush because right here on this edge really needs to be a lot more bright. Tapping it on right there. And that's still not orangey enough down there, so I'm going to redo that. A little bit more red, I think, in my mix. I'm going to wash my brush out this time. And I'm just going to side load this color. So I've only worked it onto the brush on one edge. I want this to be more red. Now let's take some of our white. We're going to add a bright little highlight on here. Okay, our brightest little highlight on our elephant is going to be, we still need to work on the eye a little bit, is some snow white or titanium white. And I just want to tap a little bit along here and kind of soften it out. We don't want to get too carried away with this. Just a few little areas where it needs to be just a little bit brighter. And then we'll come back and add our darkest shading on here. We want a little bit of brightness on the front of the leg. water in my brush. Okay, we'll do a little bit 
the front of the trunk here. A little bit out here on this outer edge. This is mostly orange out here, but we need a little bit of reflected light out here. I'm just, I have the tiniest amount of paint on my brush, just kind of tapping it on there, softening it back with my finger if I need to. We don't uh, need tons of highlight on here. Okay, I want to work on the eye here a little bit. Um, actually, yeah, let's go ahead and work on the eye before I do the final shading. So I want to take some black, and a little bit of white. It's going to make a dark gray value. I'm not really sure if this is going to work, but I want to create a, an eyelid on the eye. You can kind of see that. So I just floated it above the eye here. And I'm going to put some of this down below the eye. wouldn't you? I do that every time I zoom in, get you off camera. So a little bit underneath the eye. This is just a gray color. A little bit above the eye. my brush and get just some black here and try and create like the eyes sunken in there and a little bit under here Make sure the eye remains a circle. And then the eye doesn't have much of a highlight because it's really in the shadow, but I'm going to put just the tiniest little bit of a highlight right back there at the back of the eye. Just a teeny tiny little highlight right there. So we floated a dark gray value over the eye and underneath the eye and then brought some of the dark gray value like lines underneath the eye. Then we took black and we floated it on the eyelid and then fl fo floated it this way and I flipped the brush over and I floated it right next to it. That's called a back to back float and then I tapped a little bit of black under here. Then I took that dark gray value and tapped a little highlight in the eye. So um, we were able to cre create the, the eye definition there. So now I just want to finish out the elephant with my darkest little float of black here. Let me try a palette that's not covered with paint. So I'm going to side load with my black. create our really dark areas in here. Okay, 
wide angle out so you can kind of see the whole elephant. Kind of helps a little bit more when you can see the whole thing. Right here I want a little bit darker. Right there. I want a little bit darker right here. Um, right here we want a little darker. On his tail, I need to put a little bit of a highlight on his tail. I'm going to go up here to the um, black on my brush. Oop. Put it on the wrong side. I'm going to go up here and darken this up here. And then right here in this area. I want to smooth that out and put a little bit more black in there. You just want to find your areas where you want a little bit more shadow. A little bit more depth. And just put a little bit of color in there. Don't do not get carried away with this. I think our elephant is pretty much done. Except for me hiding, highlighting that little tail right there. So let me grab a little bit of white and mix it in with my black here. And we'll highlight. If we draw the, paint the grasses in, we may not even see that little bit of his tail. I think I want to brighten the highlight. A little bit out here. I feel like I still need some of that red wash on there, so let's red wash it. Maybe add a little bit of orange into the mix. It's a little bit harder to make a wash show up on a, a dark gray color. Add a little bit more highlight. Maybe that will make that pop just a little bit. So with our white. I think I'm going to call that elephant done. I think I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. So we're ready to work on the grasses and finish up this uh, this little guy. But um, the elephant looks pretty good, I think. There is one more place that I feel like needs a little bit of a shadow. Apparently I missed it completely. So we'll take some black, maybe some cerulean blue, a little bit of white. Black. And I probably have to come back in and do this black. But right here, this is a crease in the neck. So we need to put a little bit in there for a shadow. OK. 
kind of soften that out. And then I'm going to put just a tiny bit of black in there. Tap it in, take the water edge, and soften it out just a little bit. And that gives a little bit more depth in there. You can just play around and do all kinds of tweaking with this. I mean, that just a little bit. Okay, I think he's looking pretty darn good. I like him. And you see how all those lines that we put on there, they just kind of fade back into the elephant and we just see a few of them which gives him a little bit more dimension. And I think I'm going to make a dark gray. I see one more place I want to highlight and that's here on the tops of these creases. Just a thin little highlight. Don't going to help them stand out just a little bit more. This is a gray value. It's a medium to dark gray. So if you put it on and it's too bright, add a little bit more black to it. And I think that will help a lot. I think he is looking pretty darn handsome, if I did say so myself. Oh, I didn't finish out his tusk. Let me finish those out. Okay, so we want to take a dark gray value here on the tusks. And so that's white and black. And we want to put this back here at the base, just a little bit, and then on this side, a little shadow here. No gaps between the elephant and the tusk. Make sure you fill those gaps in. Okay, I want to put a tiny little bit of this blue on there. And I might mix it with a little tiny bit of black. Make it like this dirty blue. This is just a little wash. Just bring some of this blue onto the, the tusk. We'll, we'll take it along the bottom. A little blue tint. Okay. Now, ideally, you want that to dry before you apply your white highlight. And then we want our white. Tip. Kind of shape your tusks a little bit. Mine were kind of rounded, so I'm going to try and make it, or that one was, I'm going to try and make it a little bit more pointed. This one can have a little bit of glow on it. I want to make sure it's dry. Get some of that red and orange. Mix it together. 
this is really going to show up on this white, so you want to be super, super crazy delicate with it. I'll put just a little bit on there. I'm going to get some water in my brush. Tap a little bit of that watery mixture on there. Maybe a little bit of yellow on this one. in my brush instead of yellow. This is very delicate here. I'm not really sure I'm going to like these colors on the tusk. But it's sticking out there like it should be getting some reflected light from that sun. So I'm going to go back to my white and put some of this back out on the tip. And then tap it. Tippy tap right along that edge. So it's getting a little bit of glow on there, but we can also tell that it's still white. A little bit more white on this one. see that orange on there so I'm not going to worry too much about it. I'm just going to go back over it with some white. Now I can't quite get it that, um, that highlight to reflect on there so I'm not going to worry too much about it. Kind of fine line here. All right, I'm gonna have to get my detail liner out here. I'm gonna put a little bit of some dark gray lines in here on the tusks, maybe. Little cracks in them. And now I'm going to try and put that white back on there. This one out here is mostly gray. I'm having a hard time keeping the shape. Tusk is just growing and growing and growing. A little bit of that dark gray. This needs to definitely be darker. problem is this one's straight and this one is not. This one is more curved. So let's see if I can adjust the shape of this one. Oops, 
Probably like to be on camera, wouldn't you? <laughs> Way too much white here. I don't like them. I'm not too sure how to fix it. a little bit of burnt sienna no raw sienna to my black really dirty that up a little bit and that looks much better I like that much better instead of just that dark gray value so that is the mix you should go with instead of a dark gray add a little bit of the raw sienna and shade against the elephant and along the bottom. And then we have white on the tip and along the top. A few little lines of dark gray on there and that looks much better. Okay, we're ready to start adding grasses. <clears throat> okay, I left this for a little while and came back to it and right here it was too bright so I took a little bit of the gray and toned that down a little bit and now I'm just putting a little bit brighter red on here for the reflection from the sun. I just feel like it needs it a lot more right there. And I put some more right here. Oops. And a little bit more right through here. <clears throat> Get a little bit more of that glow from the sky. I want it to come across just a scooch more. I'm just taking the red, the naphthol red, and putting a little bit on here. Soften it out with a little bit of water. Tap it with my finger. <coughs> a little bit can be up here. over just a little bit and I think that looks better I like that reflection on there a little bit a little bit better <clears throat> so you'll just want to play around with that and get it you know where you like it um, if it gets too bright bring a little bit of the grays back in and I think it will um, turn out really good okay so we want to start working on the grasses now and for our grasses, we're going <clears> to <throat> get all the colors out that we used for down here when we were tapping it in. So <clears throat> we're going to have some white, excuse me, some of our Hansa Yellow Medium. have some raw sienna. It's the only size bottle of raw sienna I got, so I'm going to have to definitely get some more of that. Uh, we're going to have some burnt sienna. And some black. Okay, so these are all the colors that we need for the grasses. <coughs> 
So first thing I want to do is draw a, a few little like stick things in here. So let's um, have one up back here that maybe comes like that. And another one that's right here. One that's coming up like this. It's got some stuff coming off of it. <clears throat> I can add more to it. <clears throat> Excuse me. I want a few over here. Back in here. I'm just kind of play around with adding a few sticky things in here. So just kind of give yourself a rough idea. And, and this is all going to be grasses in here. But we're going to start with adding in the stick things. <clears throat> and I'm going to take a round brush. <clears throat> and grab another paper towel here. Okay, so we're going to take our... Um, I'm going to make a gray color here. And this is going to start <coughs> our sticks. And then we'll add some colors in here as we need to. And this one's a pretty decent size little stick. back there <coughs> uh, and then we've got this one here we got this one coming off the side here and we'll add some other things coming off of it as we add details to it <coughs> goodness gracious okay and then we've got one here And then we can just make some, some random ones in here. Just however you want them to look. Just a few thin ones in here. Still just that gray mix. I'm going to add a little bit more white to it. <clears throat> Make it a lighter gray now. And add a few more in here. Not too many. We want to add some, some other grasses back in here. So I think I do want one coming here. Before we get too carried away with sticks, let's make some grassy stuff in here. <clears throat> now, grasses can be made with just a round brush if you like. Um, we're going to use a rake brush. So I'm going to bring out several different ones that I have. I have all different sizes. So you can see rake brushes come in almost every brand of brush. Flat or filbert, whichever you like to use. Okay. I'm going to use, <coughs> excuse me. I'm going to try this uh, filbert one. This is the one I usually use for splattering. And it's got some really long bristles on the end of it. It's filbert shaped. It's a half inch. This is a royal brand. I've had it for a lot of years. And uh, I'm not really sure where I got it. Okay, so we want to start back in here. We've got kind of a, <clears throat> a grayish color back in here. So I'm going to go into this gray that I got here. I'm going to add a little bit of of the raw sienna into it. I want to make a little bit bigger pile because I want to be able to cover a larger area. So I'm going to create this darker gray color grass stuff first. And we're just going to be up on the tip of our brush. It has to be, the paint has to be a little thin 
in order to flow down the brush and onto the bristles. So we'll just come in here and start raking in. I don't have it quite. Let me mix a little bit more. Ooh, that's a lot of black. All right, <clears throat> let's see if I've got enough here now. I'm gonna actually flip my piece over and kind of pull towards me and make some grasses coming out of here. A little bit more of the raw sienna. I don't want it quite so grayish looking back here. Grab a little bit of white, lighten it up. And I'm just letting those long, those long pieces come off of the brush. I'm gonna get some more raw sienna and some white here. Maybe a touch of yellow in there. A little bit more water. Nope, that's not light enough. Let's grab some more white. Want the tops of some grasses back in here. And go different directions. Don't make them all just coming straight up and down. A little bit more white. Sienna. Stay off your elephant. If you want to create a little mask for your elephant, um, you can cut out the outline and lay it over your area. A little more white. Let me grab a little bit of water. These colors are all mixed on my brush, so it's not coming out, you know, a true like white or whatever color I'm picking up. I want this area through here to be a little bit lighter. Now you could also use some kind of stippling brush and stipple this in here if that is uh, what you would like the best. Or just use a round brush and stroke in. A round brush really does work pretty quickly <clears throat> if you've got your paint the right consistency. And I think I might come in on top of this and add a little bit of stuff with the round brush. I rinsed a lot of the paint out of my brush, and now I'm just going into some raw sienna. Sienna and mix that in there. A little variance of color here. You want some longer grasses up at the front and you can make them a little bit, or up at the top, and you can make them a little bit shorter back in here. And I think I'm just going to put a little bit more in here with this brush and then I'm going to move to a round brush. <clears throat> we'll be coming up over the feet and everything so don't try to avoid that part. You know, we'll be, we'll be bringing grasses up. But we've got to get some look of grasses kind of started in here. This 
will get us started anyway. And then we can come in here and add more detail. I do want a little bit of a darker grass color in here, so I'm going to just lightly tip into the black and mix that in with some of my raw sienna and put a little bit of this a little bit thicker through here. And over here, I want some darker under grasses. <coughs> The ugly stages of paintings are really hard to deal with because we want that we want that nice beautiful painting to come out all at once. So you know, it's it's sometimes hard to look at something and and see all the the beginnings of it and it's like, "Oh, is it going to get there?" It's going to get there. I promise. Bit down here, a little bit through here. That's just a little bit of black mixed in. I'm going to grab a little bit of burnt sienna, I want a little bit of that color in here. And down in here. Okay, so we've got a nice undergrowing of grasses. A few of our bigger twigs and branches and things that are growing out of the ground. Okay, I've moved this up to my rotating easel because I think it will just make it a little bit easier for you to see what I'm doing. So I want to create that um, gray color, with a little bit of raw sienna, more white, definitely have to have more white out. Okay, we want this to be a little bit thinner. So we have to have a little bit of water in here so it flows nicely from your brush or easily from your brush and then we're just going to begin adding some more detail grasses in here. I still want that to be a little bit lighter. Come in here and add some fine little detail grasses. this to spin so let me lock it in place. I'm going to put a little bit of this lighter gray onto some that we've already painted. Some of these darker ones. Start beginning some highlight on there. Just playing around with the, the black and the white here and just creating some some different kind of stuff going on. Let's go over to to this one here and add some lighter stuff going on here. This is just a, a gray, a light gray mix. And I'm just tapping it along these branches. I'm not um, really caring kind of where it comes off at. We just want to get a little bit of this on here. Okay, 
I'm going to go in with a little bit of black and a little bit of raw sienna mix. And scrub that into that stick. Put a little bit on this one. That's a lot of black. Let's wipe that off and get a little bit more raw sienna in there. Come along this one. Just tap a little bit in there. We'll come back later and add some highlights in here. But for now we're just creating a little bit of character in these. A little bit more water. Just in some of these more prominent stick things that we got going on here. Okay, I want to take a scruffy type brush. Let me find a good scruffy one here. Um, you can use an old worn out brush, which I just might do that one. I'm going to use it dry, try to use it dry, we'll see how it goes. I might have to get a little bit of water in it. I want to start creating a little bit of undergrowth here. So this tan color that I have created here, I really like it. And this is a little bit of yellow, a little bit of white, maybe a tiny bit of black, and some raw sienna. This is a color we mixed for our grasses. So white, yellow, raw sienna, and a tiny bit of black. Tiny bit of yellow, so it's mostly white and <clears throat> raw sienna. I'm going to tap this on here. And then I'm going, yep, I'm going to have to get a lot more on my brush. Alright, I'm just going to kind of tap and scumble and scruff. Maybe a little bit more white. And I don't want to cover up all my twigs, so I'm going to try and watch that. I'm just creating a little bit of texture in the background. I still want to try and stay off my elephant, though. All this area in here and we'll come and add some brighter stuff. I want some undergrowth around here. stuff in here. Not a lot of paint on my brush to be honest with you. Stay off your elephant. I really don't want to cover up all of my twigs so you know if you want it if you want to do your twigs after this you can. All right let's start adding a few little bit darker colors in here. So I want to go into a little bit more of the raw sienna and mix that in here. And we're going to create more raw sienna. A little bit of textured undergrowth that we can pull some more grasses out of here in a little bit. Start laying in a little bit of variance of color. Keep a damp brush if you need to to clean off your elephant. Not worry too much about the feet because we need grasses coming up covering all of that. And this is just a, a stippling layer. 
going to have some coming up over the nose so we don't have to, or the trunk, so we don't have to worry a lot about that. I want some of this in here. Okay, I'm going to go into a little bit of um, burnt sienna now. And we're going to add some of this in here. We won't need as much of this, but we still want a little bit of this color in here. in just a few places. A little bit over here. This is going to be darker over here. Through here is going to be a little bit darker and then we're going to add some lighter stuff in here. some nice stuff going on here. Okay, I want to get a little bit darker stuff here, so let me grab a tiny bit of black. And we want to put some of this in here. I think I want it to be just a little bit darker because this is a really dark undergrowth here. And then we'll come back in and pull our lighter grasses on top of this. But this is a, a really dark undergrowth. There's a little bit back here. A little bit right in there. Some along here. This is really, really dark, so we have a little bit of black, raw sienna, white, a little bit more raw sienna. Tap a little bit. Oh, that's a lot on the brush there. Tap a little bit in here. This is all kind of dark down through here. I'm going to have to draw those twigs back in. So I'm going to recommend that you maybe don't put the twigs in until after we're kind of done here with this part. This is really dark. Lots of dark stuff going on over here that we're going to pull some lighter colors up on. A little bit of dark back in here. Mix a little bit more here on my brush. here. So you can just kind of play around with it, pick and choose. I want to, I think I want to put a little bit more of the, um, the raw sienna stuff in there. So I'm going to wipe the excess paint out of my brush or fling it across the room and grab a little bit of this color. this in here. Okay. 
All right, I think that's looking pretty good for our undergrowth stuff. Now we're gonna, I'm gonna go in and, and repaint the twigs real quick, and then we're gonna pull some final um, grasses everywhere. I think this area back here, I need to tap just a little bit of raw sienna in, maybe mixed with a little bit of white, make it not quite so bright there. I'm going to remove the majority of the paint out of my brush because my I just washed my brush and it's kind of wet. And I don't want... I need a little bit more raw sienna. A little bit more on my brush here. I just want to put a... A light tapping of color here. I don't want it to be quite so bright. I want a bright area in right in here, like I've got it. And it does kind of go back back behind the um, elephant just a little bit, so I'll remove just a tiny bit of that. And we've got a little bit that will be coming over here. Of a lighter color. This is not so light back in here. We have all these grasses that are going to come up over the legs. So I'm just going to tap some of this in here. Get it a little bit ready for those taller grasses that are going to come in. I think we're going to be pretty good here. I think that's pretty good for our undergrowth. So let me touch up some of my twigs. Um, I just want to get that get the bottoms of them. See, this one was way down here. I don't know if we'll be able to tell that when it's all said and done, but I'm going to add a little bit of black onto them now, just straight black. We probably won't need to do too much more to these twigs. That will, will do it for those. And so now we're going to add some grasses. Okay, let's go with uh, some grasses now. And I want to go with some raw sienna and white. And I've got water mixed in here to create a hopefully a nice flow off of my brush here. And we're just going to start pulling in some short whew, grasses here and there. A little bit more white on some of these through here. I think I'm actually going to go down to my detail liner. I think I can do a little bit better with it. Remember you have to have water in your paint. Inky consistency. And I want to pull some extra twigs, stuff coming up. And we can we can actually do a little bit in, in a gray color. And just a slightly 
slightly bit darker. Add some raw sand in there. If it's not flowing off of your brush, you definitely need more water. So I just want to pull a few very fine little things up here. I'm going to work our way down here. Go every different direction, just don't go straight straight up. You want to go, you know, kind of move your brush and create some some movement to these grasses. Stay up on the tip of the brush the best that you can. It takes a little bit longer with a detail brush to get some of this Ooh. some of these grasses going. Once you can get them going, though, and create a nice flow off of your brush, that's that's the whole thing right there, is creating that flow off of your brush to get everything to, to do what you want it to do. I think I'm going to add a little bit of raw sienna, or burnt sienna in here. Maybe. And back through here, we want a few a few lighter grasses in here. I'm pulling out on the very end of it if I if it leaves too too much when I first put my brush down, so that it, it kind of blends down into the stuff that I've put in there. So really just keep playing around with your paint. I can honestly say the right consistency is the key because if it continues to not come off of your brush you still don't have enough moisture in the paint. So you've got to go in and keep adding water until it does flow off of your brush nicely. Now some of these up here are going to be really really long. going to come back on some of these and add some details on the ends or on the tips of these grasses. Let me 
These grasses back here are really, really, really tall. If you can kind of flick the end of your brush, it, it, it helps. of colors here. I need a few dark, dark ones, so I'm going to add a little bit of black in here. Some of these can be a little bit bigger on the dark ones. Just do it until you are happy with it. If you don't want to um, do grasses and you just want to stipple in, you know, everything down here, that's fine. You add as little or as much detail to yours as you would like. Pretty good. A little bit thicker than what I wanted right there. We still got some brighter white ones that we need to put in here. Okay, that's looking pretty good. We're going to add, well I think before I move on, let's take some of this darker color and we're going to kind of put some textury stuff on the ends of some of these. kind of twiggy looking just by tapping 
the ends of them. We'll do this to some of our lighter ones too. I want to I want to get these darker ones done so that I can come in and add my lighter ones. So I think that's looking pretty good. So I want to come in here now with some really pale yellow ones. And our pale yellow that we made at the beginning was raw sienna, white, and yellow. So we want to mix this I want more white in there. This is coming along pretty good. I have a lot of these coming up over here in front of this black. You constantly have to be adding water to your mix in order to get it to flow. This is looking pretty good. Alright, I'm going to come in here and add a few in through here. I'm going to come back in here. Ooh! Not that big fat one in there. That's not what I want. Now you can see why we didn't need to put the details on the feet or the trunk because that was not going to be our focal point. That's a little more than I want. I'm going to come in here and add some
few more in here. could seriously just play around with this for hours. All right, I'm going to pull a few more into this dark mixture right here. Push that dark stuff back in there just a little bit. Ooh. That's what I get for not watching what I was doing. What a mess. Okay, I think my grasses are looking pretty good. A few more lighter ones out in here. And a few over here. Okay, I think that's looking pretty good. I want to add just a few white ones in here. Before we do, I want to do the same thing to some of these grasses that we did to the dark ones. And put some stuff on the tops of them. And you may not particularly be placing this exactly where the top of a piece of grass is, but it's going to give the illusion that there's a piece of grass there. So don't be trying to look around and find every every little tiny piece of grass to, to put it on because that's going to cause you a lot of stress. <laughs> and we don't want that. I think this might be ending up to be a pretty long video, but I think it is a really great project. few more, I think. a lot of paint there. Something in my paint. A bit 
over here. And then we'll take a look at it and see. I need to do any shading at the base to kind of set everything. that's going to be pretty good for our grasses. I don't want to overwork it. I say that then I do more, don't I? It's kind of hard to stop. Okay, let's do just some plain white ones. Just a few. We won't need a lot of these. Thin it with your clean water. And then we're just going to pull a few bright white ones, maybe. If I can get my paint a good consistency here. Fresh paint will work best. And my paint is already starting to dry out. We don't need a whole lot of these. I'm not going to put any over there. I want to keep most of them over here. And then we'll just tap some, some white onto some of these. If we can find them, if we can't, no big deal. I just want a few. Bright white ones. Okay. That was a big bright white one. Okay, I think I'm going to leave it right there. Just a few bright white ones. pretty good I think. So now the last thing that I want to do is see about shading a little bit at the bottom to kind of set some of these grasses. Okay I kind of want to set all this give it a foot as you would. So I'm going to take a little bit of this gray, this dark gray mixture, maybe add a little bit of raw sienna in it, and a tiny bit of white. That raw sienna is going to tone it just a little bit. Okay, and then we're just going to come in here at the bottom down here and tap and squeeze scumble and scoot it up with the water edge. Create some shadows in between the, the grassy areas. But we mostly want it for down here. Kind of set everything. wipe some of that off. That's a little bit more than what I want. Just a little bit. Just a tiny little bit of shadowing underneath the bottom of it. And I think that might just finish this project. Let me move it off the easel now so you can see it. I think it turned out great. You could even wash some of the orange around it if you want the grasses to have some of the glow um, from the sun. I mostly just wanted it to be on the elephant. So uh, that is an option 
for you. But I think it turned out great for my first ever elephant. So thank you so much for painting with me. Leave me some comments, some feedback. Tell me what you think, what you liked, what you didn't like. Um, anything that you need help with. I'm always happy to help. Um, and thank you guys so much for watching. I appreciate every one of you. If you are new to my channel, please subscribe. Give me a thumbs up because that really helps my channel a lot. And um, I appreciate every one of you. See you guys on the next one, everybody. Bye-bye.